So later today, we have the Moonshot event, which means we can only use common pitchers. So let's be real, it doesn't matter who you throw out there, more than likely you're going to get shelled. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the best common pitchers that you should have on your Moonshot event squad. So let's hop right into it. So a couple things to know when you're picking up some of these guys is the important things to take away is if they have a decent hits per nine, which let's face it, they're common cards and not many of them are going to. So it'll be roughly anywhere between a mid 50s to low 60s hits per nine solid. And then you want pitchers with a nice five pitch mix, generally including a sinker and or a cutter. And we found both those things with our our first guy, which is Andre Jackson of the Dodgers. He has a fastball that can reach 96, which is decent velocity for a common. He has a circle change, a curveball, and then he has the famous cutter with 57 hits per nine. So he's right in that mid 50s hits per nine, which is once again, solid for a common pitcher. He also has a cutter throwing hard so you can keep people off balance a little bit. Four pitch mix, would rather have a five, but still this card isn't bad in terms of common. As long as you can mix up your pitches decent, he'll be okay out there. You wanna find guys that have a cutter and a sinker, then you can be really effective kind of switching between those two pitches. But as long as he has the cutter, he's gonna at least be solid. It's so weird seeing Julio Tehran as a common just because of how good he was starting his career. He was a top 10 prospect at one point in his career, came up, he was amazing for the Braves, and then everything just fell apart. So he's a common now, apparently a free agent, and he has 64 hits per nine, which is great for a common pitcher. He does have the sinker as his primary pitch, fastball, which is in the low 90s, a slider and a changeup, so another four pitch mix. Solid control of the sinker, 79 break, which is gonna be really good on that pitch. And I mean, there's really not much to say. They're fucking common pitchers, man. He has the sinker, he has okay hits per nine. He's gonna at least be solid enough in this event. Very similar pitcher to Julio Tehran. We got Thomas Hatch, who has the mid 60s hits per nine, which is great. But instead of a sinker, he has a cutter. He has a fastball that can reach 94, a changeup, a cutter, and a two seamer. So not the best, best pitch mix. He doesn't have a sinker, doesn't have a curveball, doesn't have a slider, but he's got good hits per nine for a common. And then he has the cutter, which are the pitches you wanna look for. If you find somebody who has four pitches and one of them's either a sinker or a cutter and his hits per nine aren't terrible, you can be effective with him and at least keep people off balance. 83 velo and 78 breaks, pretty solid too. Fastball has a lot of movement with 78 pitch break. So do the change up on the cutter. So he's got a lot of movement on his pitches, good hits per nine. And then I like that he has a cutter. It's really nice too, because all these common pitchers go for like 30 stubs at most, but Chi Chi Gonzalez is definitely one of the better ones. And you can get him for the high price of 22 stubs. 48 hits per nine is fucking terrible, but he's got 71 one velo 76 break solid there and even though his hits per nine is low his pitch repertoire is amazing with the fastball that reaches low 90s slider circle change and then we've talked about it a few times but he has a cutter and a sinker if you have that cutter sinker combo working you can really work the inside and the outside part of the plate keep people off balance and tunnel your pitches really well which is why chi chi gonzalez even though he has a low hits per nine can be solid in this event. But just remember that your opponent can use any hitter you want. So odds are you're gonna be facing 90 overall Mike Trout quite a bit, but the 67 home runs per nine is really nice to have too. Okay, so for this card, Bryce Wilson, do not use right away in this event because his inside edge is minus five overall and it took him minus nine on his hits per nine, which was already at 42, which is fucking terrible. Now it's down to 33, which is just abysmal. I could go up there and apparently with that hits per nine, just tank one off him. So please don't use this until the inside edge is gone. But the pitch repertoire is really nice. Fastball reaches 93. He has a sinker that reaches 93, a circle change. And then I'm a big fan of slurps. I don't see a lot of people talking about it much. Everybody talks about the sinker, the cutter, but slurves, I get a lot of strikeouts with and I can't hit it worth shit. If you bring out somebody with a nasty slurve, like Goose Gossage later in the year, wait till we get 99 Goose with that slurve, I can't hit that shit. So his pitch repertoire is amazing. It'll keep people guessing, but the hits per nine. Don't use this until the inside edge is gone. And even when it's gone, the 42 hits per nine's really, 
really bad. He also has 53 home runs per nine. So if they make solid contact, that sucker's gonna fly. Now we got TJ Zeus. I don't even know if I said that right. Zeus, the Greek god of lightning? I don't know, man. He's got 53 hits per nine, which is right on par with what I said for decent for common pitchers around 55 to low 60s. But he has a sinker and a cutter. The sinker's his primary pitch. So that combo is gonna be really nice. Also has a slider and a changeup. He's the first pitcher I have ever seen who doesn't even have a four seam fastball on him. Like what? Does this dude not know how to throw a fastball? I don't know, but he's definitely a card that's up there. Him and Chi Chi Gonzalez are probably two of my favorite cards that I think you should, that are must pickups, and he's only 35 stubs. And then this is the last starting pitcher I wanna show and we'll get into bullpen. That's JC Mejia. He has a sinker, slider, fastball, circle change, and then I talked about the slurves. I'm a big slurve guy. Maybe you're not. This is all personal preference, but he has that as well. So the sinker slurve, love it. He also has the slider. 56 hits per nine is solid. He has 98 break on his pitches though. That's one thing to know is when I look at him, his sinker has 98 break on it. So it's gonna have a lot of movement. The slurve has 93. So that pitch is gonna be nasty too. His stuff wise, is pretty disgusting. The thing that worries me is 45 home runs per nine is pretty low. So once again, if they square a ball up, that shit's gonna fly. So that's what I have for starting pitchers. Now let's get into the bullpen and start with Tyler Kinley. It's nice because bullpen pitchers notoriously have better hits per nine. Tyler Kinley, no different. 76 hits per nine kills any starting pitcher that we showed before. I don't like his pitch repertoire. He only has a slider, a fastball that reaches 96, so he throws decently hard and a circle change, but the 76 hits per nine for a all common pitcher squad is gonna be huge. He also has 64 home runs per nine, so I can confidently throw him in there and hope that he doesn't give up three home runs and four batters. You can't say the same about a lot of these pitchers. Same thing with Steve Ciszek, 74 hits per nine is great, 78 home runs per nine is great, he has a singer, nice slider, and then a fastball. But what makes Steve Ciszek card so good is his windup is so funky and just throws people off, making it very hard to time pitches up to begin with. So he's another card I can throw in there confidently and think he could get three outs. So now we have Kevin Quackenbush, who has to have the best last name in all of baseball. Like Quackenbush, come on, man. 65 hits per nine is gonna be nice. He has a four seam fastball, reaches low 90s. Knuckle curve, slider, splitter. So four at least okay pitches, decent hits per nine. He's a solid middle relief option. Also, we gotta pay attention to the home runs per nine because we're playing at Coors Field. So another stat to note is if he has decent home runs per nine, he's at least gonna be useful in this event. Quackenbush has 66, which is solid. This is like the first guy I've never even heard of. Brandon Belock. 65 hits per nine, 58 home runs per nine, but he's got 87 velo, so decent velocity, and 99 break on his pitches. So his stuff is pretty gross. His pitch repertoire is also nice too. Four seam fastball reaches mid 90s, slider. He has the famous sinker, circle change, and a 12 6 curveball. So I like the pitch repertoire. His control is okay. His slider, he has virtually none. Everything else is really good. Pitch break, he has 99 on the 12 6 curveball. So apparently he has a nasty curveball. Then decent movement on the changeup and the slider. A lot of people have at least probably heard of this guy, Wade LeBlanc. He's been on a million different teams in the bullpen, in the rotation. And with that, you know he's going to have decent stamina. 45 is you know, solid for a bullpen arm. Might be able to get two innings out of him. Fifth three hits per nine is okay. He doesn't walk a lot of guys. Nothing too special about his outlining stats, but his pitch repertoire, he's got the cutter. He's got the sinker with virtually no velocity whatsoever. Circle change, four seam fastball that reaches 87 miles per hour. So he throws like a high schooler and then a sweeping curve. His stats, his velocity, none of that look really good, but he's also a left-handed pitcher. You're gonna need those in your bullpen. He also has a really good pitch repertoire, which at this point, any common pitcher I throw out there more likely is gonna get shelled. So I feel like it's good to have guys that can at least keep hitters off balance and I can tunnel pitches with. Junior Guerra has a very nice rating of 69 hits per nine and 69 home runs per nine. It's perfect that this is Junior Guerra stats. Got a two seam fastball, four seam fastball, 12 six curve, splitter, and a slider, 80 velo, 86 break. So he's pretty solid there. Kind of like Quack. Bush, he's just a solid middle relief option. Jorge Lopez has a sinker, curveball, four seam fastball that can reach the mid 90s, circle change and a slider, so a good fit, five pitch repertoire there. Hits per nine is really low, 
55 home runs gonna be nice and then he has 99 velo so he throws pretty hard even though it's only mid 90s so unfortunately he doesn't have the outlier quirk i think there's at least a lot to like about this card and also he has 71 stamina because just like wade leblanc he's been in and out of the rotation throughout his career so he can easily give you two innings if you need it and you want to save your bullpen for the next game or hell you can even use him as an opener and start him for a game if you want so there are only three more cards that i want to show you one of them being sal Romano. Mono, who has a sinker, slider, curveball, and a four-seamer. If he has a sinker as a primary and at least a four-pitch mix, he's an automatic cop in my book. 61 hits per nine, it's at least good enough. 90 velo with 83 break on his pitches, which is going to be solid. His control isn't the best, so you might be a little wild with him at times. But four different pitches to mix things up will keep people guessing, and then 6-1 hits per nine. You could at least see some weak contact. Actually, I'm going to add one more person in here after looking at this, and it's Jake Woodford. Five-pitch mix with a sinker as the primary, which, like I said, is an automatic hop. Slider, four-seamer, curveball, changeup. 60 hits per nine is going to be good. And then 99 break on his pitches, so his stuff's going to be disgusting. He has 90 99 break on the curveball absolutely nasty he also has started in an nfl career so he has a very nice 69 stamina Ooh. the only reason i even know who this guy is is because during opening weekend he purposely threw at inner mccutcheon like a little bitch you don't throw at kutch 73 hits per nine is going to be really good out of the bullpen though he has a fastball he has a cutter so he has at least a really good pitch curveball and then a change up no slider on him, which is upsetting. Also, no sinker. But the hits per nine is going to be really good along with that cutter. And then the last card I want to show is going to be Dennis Santana of the Rangers. Primary sinker that reaches 95 miles per hour. He throws very hard, has a slider, circle change, and then a four-seamer. 64 hits per nine is going to be really good out of the bullpen. He also has 70 home runs per nine, which is nice. And then 99 below, 93 breaks. So he throws very hard. He also has good control of his sinker and his slider with his sinker also having 93 break on it. So this guy's got closer stuff. So if you're looking to close out a game, He's the guy I recommend bringing in. But man, there's so many decent cards that you can go through and pick up for your bullpen or your starting rotation. Once again, you're primarily looking for people who have solid hits per nine, solid home runs per nine, and then a four or five pitch mix, which includes a sinker, a cutter, and we'll even add a slurve in there. If they have a slurve, they can at least be useful. And they're all over the place. So just go down the marketplace, find them. And most of these guys are going for like 20 stubs. You'll have a couple that go for a few hundred. I don't know why. Oh, it's inside edge makes him at least solid. So definitely go through the list, find some guys. This comes out in a couple hours. The reward is a 90 overall breakout Tim Salmon, but the moonshot event far and away is the best event throughout the year and it sounds like we're gonna get it on multiple occasions this year because usually it's just during the home run derby so we'll at least get it one more time but let me know what your thoughts are let me know some common pictures that you found that you're gonna test out or you think you'll have success with subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out